We're enjoying a partly sunny day with the operative word being sunny and uh, we uh, sat out here for a little bit. Whoops, I'm gonna lose my balance. To check things out and enjoy the bay and Blake found his favorite little spot which is in these chairs and whether they're in the back or in the front doesn't matter. He loves the chairs and Barkley, well, he loves everything. Right, buddy? You go everywhere. In a little bit, we're gonna go, there's an island over there and behind the island, there's a trail or a scramble, I'm not sure which, but I believe there's a lake back there and we're gonna go see if we can find the lake. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right, kid, let's go play. All right, we just spent a few minutes flying the drone and now that we have reconnaissance the area, <laughs> we're gonna go try to figure out where this lake is. But we know from the drone, it's that way. Hey, darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the countryside is so pretty Set of obstacles completed <laughs> on this way. Our first glimpse of the lake. Check out this moss. My foot goes down like six inches. We made it. Alright, we climbed up on this little knoll so we could get an overlook of the area and it looked like it had been occupied by some other visitors and as you look a little closer there's a bunch of goat hair up here so I think the goats have hung out here and we're back home sweet home there's a boat waiting for us to take us to the ship <laughs> okay, our tender's here to take us to Sea Venture. How's that? That's much better. <laughs>
city and strive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. Baby, don't you understand that we only get one life? I want to make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. Yeah, we only get Good morning. One it's about nine o'clock. It is a beautiful morning and we are actually sitting outside. I wanted to show it to you. This is the bay, Pluton Cove, where we've been hanging out. And um, we have really enjoyed our time here. We did a great hike yesterday. And now it is a minus tide. And it's really cool to just look at the shoreline and the birds, there's a lot of bird life. It's just beautiful here. Jim and I have been sitting up here. We've just uh, enjoyed our time in the bay, enjoying the sun out, um, having a cup of coffee, and just kind of figuring out where it is we're going to go next. Fair? Yeah, exactly. It's really nice to be able to sit up here. You know, we have this large space, and we've hardly got to use it at all. So we're sitting up here dreaming about how we could reconfigure it for Mexico. The only problem is Mexico is, what, 3,100 nautical miles away. But, oh well, we shall get there. We have to start going that way and not that way, but we'll get there. Well, if you've watched our videos, you know that we stay uh, pretty laid back, I think, and not, uh, you know, we don't tend to move from one disaster to another, to another, but, uh, and not too much breaks on Sea Venture. We work pretty hard to kind of keep it all in one piece, and I like everything working the way it's designed to work. But recently, we have now, since we arrived in Prince William Sound, had three things break uh, that we've needed to work on. One... I'm going to call like a catastrophic failure, one uh, bad failure, and one a good failure. So I just wanted to review those three things that have recently broken on Sea Venture and what's going on with those. And remembering that when something breaks, that's not bad. It's part of boating, part of the adventure of being self-sustained is uh, the, the challenge of, you know, things breaking and then figuring out solutions and, and fixing them. So let's uh, start with the middle one, the bad one, not the catastrophic and not the good failure, the middle failure. Uh, our toilets clogged. And that ended up requiring taking apart the sewer line system, which is uh, not a fun chore on any boat. And Sea Venture is no different. You have to get into really cramped spaces and then you kind of work over your head with the sewer lines. And it's just a bad thing. And uh, so we needed to take all that apart and clean everything out and put it all back together. So that's done, working perfectly. Probably could have done that sooner if we'd realized, you know, but uh, we waited till it clogged up and then we had to do it. So next, let's, uh, so that was uh, failure one. Failure two, let's talk about the catastrophic failure. Our Brew Express built-in coffee maker, <laughs> the power died on it. I don't know what the problem is. There's power to the unit, and, and uh, but it doesn't power up. It, 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 it electrically died in the middle of brewing a pot of coffee. So I like my morning coffee, so that's a catastrophic failure. We're gonna, I might try to take it apart, but you know, it's just all circuit boards and stuff. I'd be surprised if I could find something. So there may be a, a new uh, Brew Express coffee maker in the works to replace that one. So that's my catastrophic failure. <clears throat> so the good failure, the good failure, the water maker has quit working. Uh, and it has been on, um, it has been tenuous for a good while. It is a Spectra 300, a 12 volt small, low power consumption water maker. I don't think it's the right water maker for Sea Venture. Um, 
But I liked it when we bought Sea Venture because it was already installed and it was the exact same water maker we had on our old boat. So that part of it I liked. And the main pump, has, uh, Clark pump, has, has quit working. And I haven't dove into it yet because I'm a little fearful if I do that I might fix it. And I really don't want to fix it. I want to replace it with a new water maker. So we're going to call that a good failure. Thankfully, we have plenty of fresh water. That's not really an issue up here anyway. Uh, we'll be in port often enough and be able to fill up that we can uh, uh, function without a water maker before being in Mexico. But I think uh, when back in the Puget Sound area in August, a new water maker will be in the works. So cross your fingers. Rosie's going to make me dive into it, I'm sure. But if all goes well, we will be unsuccessful in fixing the spectral water maker and we'll replace it with a much larger uh, unit that can produce a lot more water. So that's our three failures we've been dealing with. And, uh, oh well. Now we're having to make coffee on the stove. Old school stuff, but it works. What you doing, kiddo? You're just looking out the window, aren't you? There's the Glacier Spirit, a tour operator out of Aldiz. We've seen them go up the uh, Columbia Glacier, and today they are headed up the Mears Glacier. It's a beautiful day for it. Continuing our cruise up toward the Mears Glacier. Approaching the moraine. You can see it on the chart there. It looks like it's going to be five or six feet deep. I've split my screen up close on this side for me and on this side further out because way up there close to the glacier is a tour boat. Glacier Spirit on AIS. So I'm kind of watching them to see how fast they're going and how close they're getting to the glacier. But right now it looks like they're pretty close to the glacier and going 24 knots, so I suspect uh, ice conditions should be pretty good. Though when we got stuck in the ice by the Columbia Glacier, this same boat went further up. So it's a big 90-foot catamaran tour boat. Starting to cross the moraine. Looks pretty innocent out there. Until you look that way and you see the land. Part of the moraine over there is out of the water. Yep. We were in 600 feet, you can see here. And it's been shallowing up. We're now in 25 feet. Wow. Just like it says on the chart. They're just working on finishing up crossing over the moraine. But look at the water here. It is like two different colors. just commenting that there were like overfalls out there that I just showed you filming um, and so Jim was telling me what was going on in here so well, I think it's the incoming tide is going over the moraine and then falling off a cliff face to the deeper water causing the water to drop and create that strong current line but before that we were at a thousand rpm approaching that current line doing 7.5 knots so we're in like a three knot current coming over the moraine there. It's just a real strong push of water, thousand feet deep coming up to 25 feet deep and then dropping right back off. 
I mean, we're a minute past the moraine and what we're at 450 feet of water. Crazy. Pretty, pretty remarkable bottom topography. Working our way up the valley. Looking at the computer I picked up on. We are north of 61 degrees latitude now. As we continue to head north, it looks like there's a few bergs in the water. Here is the Mears Glacier. It's an advancing glacier, one of the few. And um, in the guidebook, Lethko talked about, you can see how it's advancing onto the shrubbery, the trees and things like that on the shoreline because it's advancing so quickly that these trees do not die off in the freeze zone that precedes a glacier but um, are being overrun by the glacier. There's a big splash over there. Oh. That really uh, makes the boat rock, doesn't it? Yeah. I like the sound. I know, the crackling and the pops. It just really makes booms. you understand that it's moving. Yeah. It's moving. I hear something, but I see nothing. Sounds like sounds like gunshots. Yeah. The way it pops and I guess it's just ice cracking and breaking yeah. and yeah. the blue sky behind me. Yeah. 
We're right about a half money. That's good. I think I read that that was the I safe think spot. I think a quarter mile, too. Really? Oh, straight ahead. How wide is this channel? Do you know? Saying goodbye to the Mears Glacier. Wow. Saying hello to the cat. Goodbye to the glacier. Mm -hmm. Quite a sight. into Wells Bay from the sound and we are coming behind these little islands and working our way up to Cedar Bay which is up here and to our right and we're gonna anchor here for a spell Here we are in our anchorage in Cedar Bay, Prince William Sound. We settled in a few hours ago and it is now 11.30 p.m. And it's just hard to imagine it's time to go to bed or not. Look at this, amazing. Thank you for watching as we continue our journey through Prince William Sound before eventually heading south all the way to La Paz, Mexico. For real-time updates, jump over to our website. You can click on Where in the World is Sea Adventure right now. You might be really surprised if you do that. Or join the Venture Club and get regular updates. Until next time, wishing you no wind and flat seas.